Well, hello everybody. I had a huge guide that came out on Cargo Links, and I just want to make a simplified version of it so I could explain everything. Here's the deal with Cargo Links. Cargo Links transmit in real time, roughly every three minutes, almost to the dot. And yes, I did time this for this specific link. However, links between other systems might actually take longer. I cannot say with certainty that they do or do not. It is not based on UT time currently, but this is how they work. And they're not entirely useless if you're actually playing the game and then coming back here later. The whole intention of, of the cargo link is to link multiple outposts to a main outpost so that you can have all the resources coming into one centralized point. Now I'm going to go over the graph before I show you anything else because I think it will just make more sense. So let's pop this graph up here. So in the center, you can see we have our main base. Now, the core concept for this is that we only want things coming in and nothing going out. People are having issues where the goods are circling and, you, you know, you have copper coming in, but then it gets into the main storage line and then it's going out. So what you want to do is separate your storage systems so that they're not cycling. This is actually relatively easy. It's a pretty simple concept. At your main outpost, all resources are coming in and at outpost A, in B, resources are going out to the main outpost. To make sure that you're not circling things around, and if you want resources coming in between multiple outposts, I'm gonna show you how to make clean connections to make sure that you don't have issues. So what you're gonna do in general for any outpost is have your extractors with each of them going to their own individual storage system. This helps mitigate the bugs that happen when you have over 60 links, and it creates a very clean flow where you can problem solve individual issues because it's easy to identify what links are not working. All right, so in this example, we have three aluminum extractors that we're gonna tie into their own system here. Now to connect these resources to another outpost, you're going to need to build two cargo links. One at the outpost you're sending the resources from, and the second at your main base where you want to receive the resources. Each cargo link has both an incoming and outgoing box. So we're sending our resources to the main base. So we want nothing incoming. We only want things outgoing. So we're going to connect our resources accordingly. So let me show you how to do this. We're going to connect each of the extractors to this top box to start the chain. Remember, each of these, we want its own individual storage to make things clean. We're then gonna do these by foot because it's just much simpler. And we're gonna daisy chain each of these to connect all of the storage boxes. Now this is the last box in the link and it is gonna go to the out going output link. We're going to repeat this process for each of the storages. See? Now we have clean links. Now I have other things going on in this space, so just ignore all of those arrows. But to make things easier for us, we're going to place a transfer station, okay? Now, what this is going to do is make it so we can walk up to this and pull all the resources. So what we want to do, create a second outgoing link from the last storage to the transfer station. Now, the core concept I want to express here is never link your transfer station to the outgoing box. That's how you get a circling of goods between outposts because it's pulling from all of your storages. The way we've set this up, it is only going to pull from the resources that we want sent out. We can now use our transfer station as the main hub for all of the storage systems and not have to worry about creating the circle of life of resources inside of our base. We have now established all the resources are going out. Nothing is coming in. We can go to the transfer station to pull all of our resources and we are awesome. So that's how you will set up every extractor and everything that you want to send. Now, a popular question that comes up is, what if I want to send multiple materials? How does it decide what material gets sent? If you do it this way, it should feed evenly. However, I would actually suggest that you have a cargo link for each material you're trying to send, which probably isn't even feasible. The true fact is, so goods are delivered in real time game time, not 
you turn the computer off, come back, and there's stuff. Like, you have to actively be playing the game for the transfer of goods. So to be quite honest, a lot of people don't use it, and we just go up and use the transfer station. I still set my systems up like this because when I play the game for a bit, I come back and I do have those resources, which is nice. Realistically, they are not that great. And you're kind of better off just going transfer station to transfer station. Remember, you can carry infinite weight. You will get damaged all the way down to 10% health, but you will not die. You can run forever. You can carry for you know 40,000 pounds and not die. I mean, this will probably be patched at some point where you can't move at a certain weight. So you will have to have a cargo ship for that. So now we're gonna go to what would be your main outpost. And that for me is Dread. So now we are on the receiving end. So we need to build the cargo link to establish connection with the resources we're sending from the other outpost. We also want to establish a storage system to accumulate those received goods. This is important because these boxes only hold up to 500. So you want these things to be accumulating storage. I would greatly recommend you build a pretty sufficient storage system for this, more than three boxes, but this is what I'm using for this example. All right, now this is important. Do not connect the outgoing box here. We are coming in. You have to run up pretty close for it, know you're going to the right one. Make sure it says cargo link incoming in the top left. We're gonna plug this into the first in the chain, and then we're gonna link these storage boxes so that they all fill. And this will be the last in chain. And then from the storage and last in chain, we're gonna push it into the transfer station. Okay, that's it, that's it. And then now we're gonna connect those two outpost links. And it was outpost five that we were doing this from. So whatever outpost, you just did that setup. You're going to click on the name and click cargo link. And there you go. Now, a problem that happens when you switch cargo links is sometimes the cargo links get bugged. And what you have to do is destroy both cargo links, replace them, and then just reestablish this connection and, you know, just attach it to the first in chain. It's a very easy fix. If you've done everything correctly and it's not working, it's because it's bugged. All you have to do, delete the cargo link, reestablish connections, and it will work again. That is all you have to do to get cargo links to work. So we have established its own storage inventory and we've linked it to the transfer station. Now, all we have to do to pull on all of the resources is go to the transfer station here and we can pull from everything that's produced here and everything coming in. And if you have a workbench or anything else, you can just go to the workbench and it will pull from all those resources. That way you don't have to be holding all of these resources and you can craft whatever it is that's coming in. And all you're gonna do is just repeat this process for every single good that you want. Now you can only place three outpost links per outpost unless you get outpost management rank one, which allows additional cargo links to be placed at outposts. Now keep in mind that does not impact the one for one relationship you have to have one cargo link per one cargo link you can't have multiple cargo links connected you can only have one connection established at a time it's very frustrating it sucks but that is how you get these to work i think eventually this will be patched and that this will be viable so i have shown you exactly how to do this now for the inter system cargo links it's the exact same principle nothing changes same one-to-one -one relationships a cargo link inter system i don't have enough for it and you need helium to power it so you will place a helium extractor which is a gas and then you will build gas storage in the same concept that i did here one storage per extractor and then you will like the storage just link it to the system cargo link to power it that's it that's all you have to do that's the only difference is that you're just powering it with helium everything else remains the same so we just had a cargo landing so let's see how this works so you can see right there it landed and my aluminum is going up so you can see that is how it works i hope that this helped you put a lot of work into my last video and i think i gave too much information and i wanted to make sure i got this out before someone stole stole my work to be quite honest so uh here you guys go this is the culmination of all my hard work i hope you appreciate it please hit the like button to help with the algorithm thank you